Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear learners to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLA University, Matra. So let us look what has been discussed in our previous lecture. Here we have talked about the theories of business cycle. As we have seen there are different phases takes place in the economy. We have expansion phases, we are into contraction phases which comprises of recession and depression and how does this phases takes place right why does uh, this change happens right so to understand them better we have talked about various theories and based on these theories we have tried to understand the different phases of the economy here we have talked about the hot race monetary theory of business cycle where hot race believes that these phases takes place because of change in the money supply and this money supply usually changes because of change in the bank rate right uh, means financial institutions make changes to the interest rate and they stimulate the increase and decrease of supply of money in the market and because of that uh, change in the interest rate the investments in the economy increases during the expansion because that rate reduced by the government and uh, during the period of contraction they increases the rate because of more demand in the market when the economy reaches to the peak point and then gradually the investment reduces which further reduces the demand as well as uh, the production of goods and services right so this was the belief by hot ray when we have talked about innovation theory this innovation theory is given by uh, scum peter and he believes that uh, uh, this happens because of innovation the innovation which has been made by the uh, producers and their product regarding uh, the new technology if they have innovated if they have innovated the new product or they have explored the new market so there can be different kind of innovations which can be made and this innovation increases the demand in the economy which increases the investment and then further it gives rise to the employment rate which increases the income of the people and that is how expansion takes place and when further this innovation are not there uh, goods becomes popular in the market people are not very keen to buy them right because that gives them that does not uh, you know gives them any push to buy any uh, old commodity which is already there so they gradually the exp uh, this uh, contraction phase of economies appear then we have talked about uh, the hicks theory and this real business cycle theory right uh, there are different beliefs like hicks believe that it is the effect of multiplier and accelerator we study in the economy right and based on this autonomous investments and the induced investments what changes are taking place in the economy during the expansion and the contraction phases uh, those were uh, the, those were discussed right then we have this keen uh, theory as well keynesian theory which believes uh, that the investments of any firm depends upon the efficiency of their capital the, the uh, right marginal efficiency of their capital how much return are they going to get right so usually the producer would like to invest more when they expect higher returns on their capital and definitely their expectations are higher during the expansion phase and during the contraction phase because their expectations are less so they invest less then we have talked about this Samuelson theories of business cycle and in this theory again we have seen the effect of multiplier how we relate the change in the income due to the change in the investment and we also understand the impact of accelerator because here the accelerator changes because here with the change in the consumption the investment in the economy changes right so we have understand the interrelationship between this and we have combined these factors together and how the autonomous inv investments in the economy increases the uh, you know employment opportunities and attracts the induced investments as well and lastly we have talked about this cobweb theory this cobweb theory is related uh, mostly to the agricultural products and where we feel that farmers usually supply those commodities and they want to supply those commodities which have higher prices in the market so uh, the, here we have studied the relationship between the supply and the prices and what usually we have uh, understood here is when there is more supply of any commodity their price reduces and because of the reduction in the price they does not want to 
produce that crop right or they want to produce that crop which is lesser in supply so that they would be able to increase the price and would able to get their higher returns on those uh, you know production of goods and services right so these are the different theories which are given on different beliefs they have certain assumptions for their study and we have also seen the limitations of these theory but more or less all theories try to help us understanding of these expansion and contraction phases taking place in the economy but here in this class we are going to talk about uh, further new aspects of it which we have uh, discussed during the expansion as we have seen that expansion is a phase where the demand increases income of the consumer increases investment increases everything is increasing right prices also increases because of increase in the money supply because of increase in the demand of the commodities so particularly we have seen during the expansion phase inflation in the economy takes place right so what is meant by inflation and what are the things uh, we are using going to use to measure the inflation in the economy so that is what we are going to cover in this lecture so let us look at the learning objective here you'll be able to explore the realms of inflation and its different frontiers then you'll also be able to develop into the concepts like wage price spiral hyperinflation and inflationary gap uh, what are these different terminologies which we are going to use and then you'll be able to understand various measures of inflations and their role in decision making finally you will be able to analyze the reasons behind inflation why does inflation takes place and how it, it impacts the decisions uh, at consumer level at producer level as well as government level so those uh, impact also we will discuss and finally we will look at the measures what measures are been taken up by the government to control the effect of inflation or to curb it right so this is what we are going to start with so before we know how to uh, measure the inflation and what are the different ways to control it let's uh, let us look about what inflation is right what is meant by this term inflation as we all know inflation is uh, can be defined in a very simple terms where we say that it is a persistent increase in the price of commodity right when the price of commodities are increasing regularly then we usually call it as an inflation or opposite to it we can say that when there is a persistent decline in the money value right when the value of money is decreasing okay then we call it as an inflation and that is uh, that is the reason we have talked about the fundamental principle if you remember in our any initial classes uh, we, uh, and because of that we have understood the principle of discounting right discounting principle help us to know the uh, present value of our money right because as we know the value of money is decreasing because of uh, the inflation taking place in the economy so how are we going to understand this inflation and how do we control it that is very important because if there will uh, an increase definitely inflation is the indicator of growth also and uh, we have discussed this earlier that it is the by product of expansion whenever there will be an expansion taking place there will be inflation but uh, we we also have to understand that if inflation is increasing on a continuous basis and the percentage of inflation increases then again it is not good for the economy right up to a level uh, we can have a good indication of the economy because that represents the growth because if there will be no growth there will not be any inflation right so what has to be taken care of up to which percentage we have to control it we have to measure it so that there should not be any problem in the economy because if it will increase with the higher rates then it will create dissatisfaction because people will not be able to buy things consistently the price of goods and commodities are increasing right so in the quote of colborn we can say that inflation is the state where too much money chasing too few goods right you have lot of money but in in, in spite of that you are not able to buy many goods because your purchasing power uh, you know your the money value has been reduced not purchasing power but the money value has been reduced and the prices of those goods and services are very high so with that money you can buy only few commodities okay so now if you talk about uh, the inflation what we usually understand is inflation is of two types right we where we call it as in price inflation and money inflation or you can either say that usually when we talk about inflation we refer it into terms of price inflation only and that is what we have discussed till now right i have told you that inflation means persistent increase in the price of commodity when there is a general uh, level of price increases for goods and services we call it as an inflation but how are we going to differentiate between price inflation and money inflation 
price inflations occur when there is an increase in the price of commodity right whenever the uh, you know prices of commodities increases because of the increase in the demand right uh, the price of the commodity increases we refer it to as a price inflation whereas money inflation also gives rise uh, to this situation because whenever there is a more supply of money in the market as we know during the expansion phase the supply of money increases because of uh, higher productions higher investments in the economy right and this increases the employment rate which generates more income people are spending more uh, producer are investing more and the consumer is spending more on the consumption so supply of money will increase in the market and because of increase in the supply of money the cost of production will increase because producer are investing more they are producing more goods and services which increases the cost of factors of production and uh, definitely the consumers are also demanding more goods and services they are spending more on the consumption so the demand for goods and services increases which further increases the price of commodity so they both are interrelated concept right it's not that price inflation is something different which is not related to the money inflation yes but we have understood it into different categories where we are saying price increase is the increase in the price of the commodity right and money inflation is the infl uh, increase in the supply of money which leads to the price inflation so usually we refer inflation in terms of price only so i hope this is clear to all of you and then we have these basic terminologies also which we use at different point of time usually we call it as an inflation but there are different terms also which we use for inflation uh, different conditions are there so first is headline inflation now what is meant by headline inflation to understand this headline inflation we have also core inflation to understand uh, usually in core inflation we measure the change in the price of uh, you know goods and services only right we usually take into consideration those commodities which are uh, you know uh, non volatile in nature whereas in uh, headline inflation we take the measurement of all the commodities whether they are volatile or non volatile in nature usually we also talk about uh, the change taking place in the food and energy items right so if there is any change taking place in those commodities then we usually understand it in terms of headline inflation and then what is inflationary spike inflationary spikes refers to a sudden increase in the price right uh, you can say that if uh, for some reason right if for some reason because of weather condition because of some natural calamity if the crop uh, destroyed so definitely the supply of money will reduce so in that case what will happen the uh, price of that particular commodity will increase right of that particular crop will increase which destroyed because of some natural calamity so the inflationary spike will take place into the price of those commodity and this usually we measure for uh, food and energy item right so inflationary spikes basically reach to headline inflation you can say in short right then we have this hyper inflation hyper inflation is a just step ahead where we are saying when there is a uh, you know sudden change taking place means in in a very short span of time if the price of any commodity is increasing right which suddenly reduces the money value of your uh, value of money then we call it as an hyper inflation right especially uh, inflationary spike takes place because of some reason because but here in this hyper inflation what we are saying if uh, the price of any commodity reduces in a very short of span right and it, it increases it increases very much which it uh, reduces the value of money then we call that situation as an hyper inflation then we have the situation of stagflation stagflation is a very uh, you know you can say an uh, contradictory situation where the economy is into stagnant phase and then also we are looking uh, we are facing this problem of inflation usually this happen in a less developed country and that is very rare situation which we found right where the economy is into uh, stagnation and we are also facing this inflation problem so that has been called as stagnation uh, stagflation right then we have suppressed inflation also suppressed inflation is usually uh, you know when when there is an uh, increase in the price of those goods but that has been suppressed by the government and we usually see in the price of petrol or uh, the petroleum products where uh, the prices are increased but they have been suppressed or they have been reduced uh, because of uh, you know public utility services or public uh, demand for these goods are very high right so that is why uh, that particular reference has been termed as an suppressed inflation then we have this infl uh, disinflation 
Now this this inflation is a little different from the suppressed inflation. Here also the prices are been reduced, but they are been reduced with proper understanding and uh, with the proper span of time how the prices of these goods can be reduced, right? So that is being considered as an this inflation. So these are the different situation, different terms which we use for different uh, requirements. Okay. The another is basically uh, deflation. Now, what is deflation? Deflation is just an opposite to inflation, right? Inflation is a situation when the price of commodities are increasing because of increase in the demand, right? Whereas deflation is the decrease in the price of commodity. So basically, we have also talked about this deflation when we have discussed the contraction phase of the economy, as because during the contraction phase, the demand in the economy decreases, right? So usually what happens, the price of the commodity also decreases because of decrease in the demand. So that is, is called as deflation, where the prices falls persistently, regularly the price of commodity is decreasing, that leads to the situation of deflation. Then there is an inflationary gap as well, right? This is the another understanding of this inflation, where we understand this inflationary gap. And this inflationary gap happens because of gap between effective demand and supply, right? When the demand and supply, see when demand and supply are equal, we call it as an equilibrium phase, right? When economy works into equilibrium, but that is not, but that is actually a very idle state, right? So whenever there is a difference in the demand and supply, and because of the difference in the demand and supply, what causes change into the price of that commodity would be known as inflationary gap, right? So when supply is more, demand is less, definitely the price will go down, right? That will bring, down, you know, decrease in the price of commodity. And when the demand is high and the supply is less, then definitely the price of commodities will go up. And that continues to happen, then, then uh, that is called as inflationary gap. So producers are basically, as well as government and the consumers are trying to reduce that gap. As, a, as much as that gap will be reduced, we will be able to control that inflationary gap, okay? Otherwise, it will be bigger, okay? Then we have the another term which we called as wage price spiral. Now, what is this wage price spiral? See, wage price spiral is a kind of a interrelated chain, okay? Where we are seeing then when the price of commodities increases, suppliers are also motivated to supply more because we have seen that there is a positive relationship between price and supply. Right, producers will be able to generate more revenue for their firm, so they are motivated to sell more on the higher prices, right? So they increase their production. So when they increase their production, definitely the demand for factors of production will increase. And when the demand for factors of production will increase, definitely they will also demand for high prices, right? So for producing more goods and services, you will be requiring more people and these people will demand for higher wages. And then again, the higher wages will increase the cost of production, right? And if the cost of production will increase, suppliers are forced to increase the price of commodity, right? So this is a kind of a chain which took place and this is how we represent it uh, here that, that when there is a rise in the price, cost of living will rise and then the cost of living when it will rise, it will demand, uh, labor will demand for higher wages and then this will increase the cost of production and then cost of production will further rises the price of the commodity. So this kind of situation is considered to be as an wage price spiral, right? So I hope uh, this is understand, uh, this is clear to every one of you. You can also see what is written here. When price rises, worker demand for higher money because they want to buy those goods and services because uh, the living standard of the people or the cost of living has raises. So to protect themselves, they demand higher wages from their employers. And to protect the real value of the profit, producers passes the higher cost onto the consumer because nobody is ready to pay from their pocket, right? So whatever will be the cost, uh, they will be uh, incurring, they are going to pass it to the customer, right? And then workers who are also the consumer uh, demand for higher money wages as because these uh, customers are the consumers only uh, and the, uh, you know, employees also. So they demand for the higher wages. So this is how this is work. Uh, this keeps on going in the economy. Now moving further, we have these causes of inflation, right? What inflation is and what are the different uh, situations we usually have and different terms we uh, use for different kind of situations we faces in the economy that has been discussed. 
now we are going to talk about the causes of inflation what causes this inflation to occur right so here we are dividing this inflation into two broad categories uh, inflations occur because uh, of demand when demand is increased in the market so we call it as in demand pull inflation right when demand of commodities increases definitely as we have understood it earlier as well so demand pulls the inflation right it forces the uh, prices to go up whereas the another reason can be the post, uh, cost push inflation whenever the cost of commod, uh, factors of production increases or the cost of production increases it will also push the inflation because that in that case also the producer will increase the price uh, so that uh, they can uh, you know survive in the market and they can have their good profits margin so let us discuss the first one first where we are going to talk about demand pull inflation how uh this demand full inflations work and what are the reasons which increases the demand for the commodity so in the very first point we are saying that increase in money supply for sure whenever there is an increase in the money supply as we have seen in the expansion phase right because there is lot of demand in the market so producers are there who are uh, making more investments right they are producing more of goods and services to cater the demand in the economy right and producers when they increase their investments they product they increase their production employment rate will increase right and this will increase the income in the uh, you know income of the con consumers or the employees right so when their income will increase they again spend more on the consumption of goods and services so all these things what they do they basically increase the supply of money in the market right so when the supply of money is more in the market definitely the demand will go up then we have seen that increase in the disposable income now what is the disposable income disposable income is the income which a person earns right uh, whatever the income a person is earning after paying the taxes right so the income left with is called as disposable income right so you can simply say that uh, the income after the payment of taxes is called as disposable income now this is the income which they can dispose of in the manner they want right they can they can buy goods and services they can spend it on the consumption of goods and services as well as on the investment okay so when there is an increase in the disposable income of the consumer okay so in that case also they are spending more on the consumption they are spending more on the investments of goods uh, you know investments uh, maybe for their future references so then also they are demanding more and this demand will increase in the price of the commodity okay and why there is an increase in the disposable income because of the increase in the factors of production uh, which increases their cost right so employers will uh, employers will charge higher wages or salaries for the services they are providing so that will increase their disposable income then we have increase in aggregate spending right it's not only one person who is demanding the goods and services in the economy it is the overall impact we are seeing everybody right every person is able to have more of income right uh, so all of them are spending more on the consumption of goods and services or maybe on the investments they are spending so aggregate spending in the economy will increase right it is the aggregate effect we are seeing here and because of uh, you know increase in the aggregate spending the demand for goods and services are uh, increasing and because of this increase in the demand of goods and services the prices are going up okay so we are seeing here how the demand is pulling the inflation and that is why inflation will always be seen during the expansion phase and lastly we are saying increase in the population of the country if the population of the country will increase it will increase the demand this we have also discussed uh, under the determinants of demand if you guys remember right population size also affects the demand more people more demand less people less demand so this is how we have understood uh, the demand pull inflation right one side of inflation how demand in the economy increases the price for goods and services now looking at the other side we have this cost push inflation right how this cost will pushing the inflation to come right because increase in the cost will increase the price of the commodity and that creates the problem of inflation right because inflation is increase in the price that is increase take, uh, that increase taking uh, taking place either because of the increase in demand or because of increase in the cost but definitely the increase in price would be referred as an uh, inflation so cost push in, uh, push inflation the first reason can be obsolete technology yes if 
uh, the technology which is being used by the producer is obsolete, right? It, it becomes old, right? It's not uh, the latest one. In that case, definitely your cost of production will be higher because with that obsolete technology, if you are producing, definitely your cost of production will go up, your production will be less, right? More inputs will be required and lesser output will be there, okay? So, in that case, uh, your cost of production will be higher. Same is the case of deficient machineries, right? Obsolete technology also relates with the deficient machinery when you know not, do not have sufficient machinery, right? Uh, then definitely you won't be able to produce uh, much in the market, right? And when you are, uh, and we have also seen those economies of scale. When we are producing in bulk, when we produce in on a larger scale, then we also get economies of scale. And because of economies of scale, we were able to produce our goods at a letter, lesser cost, right? And lesser cost, uh, cost gives us the advantage of getting, uh, you know, selling product at the lesser price and earning more of the profits. But because uh, we are using these obsolete technology, if we are having deficient machinery, we would not be able to get economies of scale, rather we will face diseconomies of scale, which will increase the cost of production and then the price of those commodities will also increase. Then if we have scarcity of resources and this we have already, right, there is a scarcity of resources and for that reason we are talking about economics, because economics is helping us how we are going to utilize these scarce resources, how we are optimally utilizing them so that we would be able to get the best out of it, okay? So, scarcity of resources again is the problem because of which we are getting these resources on the higher prices and uh, having the higher cost of production. And then natural calamities, right? This is something which can happen anytime and because of these natural calamities, these resources become more scarce. Already they are in scarcity, but because of some natural calamity came, then the resources, uh, you know, uh, the, the supply reduces further, okay? So, because of this also the cost of production will increase, right? So, these are two uh, factors you can see consider for the understanding of inflation, why there is an increase in the price of commodity that happens because of demand, uh, increase in demand, right? Because demands will pull inflation and if there will be increase in the cost, then again it will push the uh, prices of the commodity which leads to the inflation, right? So, the, we have demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. Then looking further, we have this relationship of inflation with, with the impact on consumer, how the inflation taking place in the economy will impact the decision making at cons consumer level, at producers level as well as at government level. So, here we are going to have a discussion regarding the decision made by the consumer, by the producer and by the government. So, let us start with the consumers, right? So, as you know that uh, these are the people who are going to get affected most because whatever they are purchasing, right? Whatever the goods and services they buy, they need to make a payment and that is being paid in the terms of money, right? Uh, that sacrifice has to be made in terms of money and if the prices of goods are more than definitely there will be a problem for the consumer because they have a limited income. Since we have talked about these things earlier, we have seen about this consumer taste and preferences and we have also talked about the consumer buying pattern, okay? So, the kind of satisfaction they are going to get accordingly they distribute their money on the consumption of those goods and services. If anyhow, the price of certain goods are increasing, right? So, and they definitely they have to, uh, you know, reduce their demand for the other goods and services, right? Uh, like for example, if a consumer has uh, planned for purchase of a house, right? If, if a consumer is planning to buy a house and if suddenly the inflation comes and the price of that house increases, right? And because of the increase in the price, the consumer has to avail more loan from the banking institution, right? And because they have taken more loan, they have to pay more rate of interest on it, right? And because they have to pay more rate of interest on their housing loan, so they have to stop down their other expenditure, which they might be doing earlier, right? Because they have limited income with, and with that limited income, they have to decide how much money they are going to spend, right? So, uh, various decisions are needed to be taken whenever there is an inflation taking place, okay? Because you have limited source of income, if your income is not increasing uh, with the same proportion, the change which is taking place in the price of commodity, then definitely the consumer has to make the different choices and different decisions regarding the purchase of goods and services. 
Then if you look at the impact on producers, right? again the producers has also been impacted by the inflation and one is a positive impact also because as we know there is a positive relationship between the price and the supply, right? because producers always want to uh, supply more on the higher prices so that they would be able to generate more profit and they definitely get the benefit out of it. Suppose if a person wants to uh, you know rent out their land, right? So, if there will be an inflation definitely they will be renting out on the higher prices and they will get good returns. So, this is the benefit which they are going to get. But again on the other hand they suffer also because they are also into the um, production, they are also requiring the factors of production for increasing their production. So, when uh, they are demanding more factors of production then definitely they have to pay more prices to them in terms of land they are using uh, for the rent which they pay, they need to pay higher wages and salaries to their employees, right? they need to pay more uh, on the capital which they are borrowing from the financial institutions. So, it is a kind of an impact which will be there for the producer, they are sometimes they are uh, having the positive impact at the same time they are also facing the negative impact of inflation. And then if you look at the impact on government, government also has a lot of impact on the government, uh, inflation has lot of impact on the government also because uh, you see government is responsible for making out the changes in the economy, right? It is not good for the economy if we are getting into the expansion phase and the inflation is continuously increasing. So, various measures are being taken up by the government to control this higher rate of inflation in the economy. So, uh, there are different decisions which are being taken up by the government which we are going to discuss in this uh, chapter further, right? In this lecture further. Uh, where we will see how government are making use of monetary and fiscal policy to control the impact of inflation in the economy. Whenever there is more supply, how uh, we are uh, government is trying to reduce the supply in from the market and when there is a lesser supply during the contraction phase, what policies are being uh, taken up by the government to increase the supply. So, as we can see that inflation affects various decision at consumer level, at producer level as well as at government level. We need to understand it, its impact carefully and accordingly the decisions are being made, right? Now, let us have an understanding of measuring inflation, how this inflation is being measured, right? How do we calculate that there is an increase in the price of the commodity? So, a price index is basically a numerical measure designed to help, the, uh, help to compare how the price of some class of goods or services taken as a whole differs between the time period or geographical location, right? So, this price index is basically used to measure uh, the rate of change in the inflation and how do we calculate it? We calculate it based on the current year price, what is the current year price of those goods and services and then we calculate it on the basis of base year, right? Which year we have considered to be as an base year and we compare that price from the base year. Okay. So, if the price has increased uh, tremendously then definitely the inflation rate is higher, but if there is a slight change or if there is no change then these are the uh, you know ways where we are trying to understand how much inflation has taken place. Okay. So, this is the simple formula of calculating price index uh, where we measure the inflation based on the current year price of that commodity divided by the base year price, which year price of that commodity we take it as a base and then we multiply it with the 100. So, here we have uh, you know three different indexes which are being made up by producer price index and we have wholesaler price index and we have consumer price index, right? At different stages, at different point of time, we are measuring the change taking place in the prices of goods and services. So, the names are already making you much clear about at, at what stage we are measuring this change, right, in the prices of commodity. So, when we talk about producer price index, see this producer price index means we are understanding the change in the price at the producer level and, and producer involves the cost of production. So, here the producer checks whether the cost of production of the goods and services has increased or not. Okay, because if there is an increase in the cost of production then definitely the producer has to understand how they are going to impact their pricing policies, right? So, the measure, it measures the average change in the price received by the domestic producers for their output, okay? Whatever the output they are making or whatever the, uh, you know, production they are doing, 
for doing that production, the cost of raw material, the cost of labor, the cost of land, the cost of capital, right? whether it has increased or not, they measure it with the help of producer price index. Then we have wholesaler price index also and we know wholesalers are the one who purchases the goods from the producer in bulk, right? So, at that level what changes has been taken place in the price of those goods and services. So, WPI is an index that measures and track the change in the price of goods and services before they reaches to the retailer because this is the supply distribution network we have, right? Uh, the goods passes from the producer to the wholesaler and then wholesaler add their commission to it and then they passes to the retailer, then further retailer add some commission to it and then it finally reaches to the consumer, right? So, there is a kind of a different, uh, you know, distribution network involved finally the uh, product is available from the producer to the consumer right so at different stages we are trying to find out at what stage there is a difference in the price level of that uh, commodity of that good and services to measure the change taking place in inflation right so it is the good that are sold in bulk and traded between the entities or business instead of the consumer here wholesalers are not directly selling it to the consumer they are further selling it to the uh, people who are going to sell it to the consumer. So, they are uh, you know trading between the entities and the business houses. And then we have CPI that is the consumer price index. Uh, again here uh, this is being calculated to see how much change is there in the price of that particular good uh, when it reaches finally to the consumer, right. So, consumer price index is the measure that examine the weighted average of price of a basket of consumer goods and services, right? The goods which are being purchased by the consumer, such as transportation, food and medical care and so on. So, they are the different categories which are being kept here to measure the CPI and it is calculated by taking price change uh, for each item in the predetermined basket of goods and averaging them, right? So, there uh, these are the three uh, different stages at which you are measuring the change taking place in the prices and this is how with the help of price indexes you are measuring the inflation. So, here we have producer price index then we have wholesaler price index and we do have consumer price index. I hope uh, that is clear to every one of you how do we measure the inflation. And then let us look at the another heading where we are going to talk about inflation and employment. Now, as we all know, inflation has a considerable impact on the employment of the economy and usually whenever we talk about employment, uh, this unemployment rate we calculate whether our economy is having higher unemployment rate or lower in unemployment rate and better will be for the economy if the economy's unemployment rate is less because this, this, uh, this represents the growth in the economy, right? And as we all know, unemployed is a person who is looking for the job, who is seeking for the job, but uh, is not able to find the job. That means economy is not having the sufficient economic activities where they would be able to, uh, you know, give job to their people, right? So, how this inflation is being related to the employment, let us have a look to it. Uh, this in uh, this relationship of inflation and unemployment rate or employment rate is being studied by A. W. H. Phillips and based on his name only uh, we understand the relationship between inflation and employment through the Phillips curve, right? So, he is the one who studied the relationship between unemployment and inflation and the main implication of the Phillips curves is that government has to choose between the feasible combination of unemployment and inflation. See, if the economy, if the government allows for the inflation, right, if it has no problem with the increasing rates of the inflation, then definitely the economy will get full employment because here inflation is coming because of the increase in demand, because of increase in the, uh, you know, money supply in the market, right. And when there is an increase in demand, production will increase, which will increase the demand for factors of production. So, our employment rate will be higher in that case, right. So, government has to choose a feasible option where they have to decide that how much inflation they are looking for and how much unemployment rate they are ready to accept with, right. So, here uh, this Phillips curve made, made this study uh, and this we study with the help of this graph. 
and you can see here in this graph we are showing unemployment rate on the x axis and we have this inflation rate on the y axis. So, looking at the combination of these two things how inflation rate is going to affect the unemployment rate. So, you can see when the inflation was 2 percent the employment unemployment rate was 6 percent right. So, it is basically uh, you know we are having higher unemployment rate at a lower rate of inflation. So, if we are talking about we, we want to control the inflation rate in the economy and we want to reduce it then we have to definitely think of this unemployment rate that this rate will increase right. And when we reduce this unemployment rate if suppose we have uh, we are trying to reduce this in unemployment rate from uh, 6 percent to 3 percent then you can see there is an increase in the inflation rate ok. Because in that case there will be more production of goods and services taking place and with the more production of goods and services taking place the demand will increase and that is how the inflation will also go up. So, here at uh, what point government is ready to choose whether they are ready to accept higher unemployment rate or the higher inflation rate that feasible point has to be finded out with the study of this Phillips curve where we have a relationship between inflation rate and the unemployment rate. I hope this is clear to every one of you right. Now, proceeding further we have the control of inflation right. How do we control inflation ok as we have seen that inflation is good for the economy also because it indicates the growth it, it indicates the higher economic activities in the economy. But for sure if there will be higher inflation right and when the money value of good is decreasing considerably then definitely that situation is not good for the economy and the government has to take up various measures to control its effect. So, uh, there are two different measures which are being taken up by the government to control the effect of inflation here we have monetary measures and fiscal measures. So, monetary measures are all related to the money and these monetary measures are being taken up by the government to control the situation of uh, you know expansion and contraction and same is the case of fiscal measure. So, firstly we will talk about monetary measures how these monetary measures help in controlling the situations of inflation. Inflation is a situation where there is more uh, supply of money in the market right already the demand is high already the producers are making more investments right prices are high ok everything is high uh, at this particular stage of inflation taking place. So, what uh, government usually do is they talk about increasing the discounting rate right discounting rate is basically the rate at which the uh, you know. Uh, loans are being distributed. See we have centralized bank in the economy and we have commercial banks also. So, commercial bank has two sources of taking uh, funds uh, into in for them. One is they take money from the uh, central bank that is RBI in our country right and, uh, and when they avail loan from this uh, central bank they need to pay some interest to them and that is called as repo rate right and commercial bank get the deposits from the people right in the terms of their savings which they are keeping right. So, depending upon the in, uh, rate of uh, increase uh, you know increasing the discounting rate. So, this is strategy is being used by the government so that the supply of money can be reduced in the market ok. They, they purposely increase these rates. So, whenever there will be an increase in these rate they would be able to take lesser loan people will not be able to make more investment because they would not be able to raise uh, more capital or, uh, or they will think of raising more capital because here the rate of interest are high. So, they have to pay more interest to it ok. So, that is how they usually try to control the investments in the economy uh, by increasing the discount rate. Then second is high reserve ratio right. This is the another way of uh, controlling the supply of money in the market and in reserve ratios we have CRR and SLR right. CRR is the ca cash reserve ratio and SLR is your statutory liquidity ratio. Now, this cash reserve ratio is a ratio which every bank has to maintain in terms of uh, you know loan they are availing from the central bank. So, they have to keep some money in the form of reserves right. So, which they cannot distribute to anybody. So, that is uh, basically the CRR and SLR is the liquidity, uh, liquidity ratio statutory liquidity ratio which every bank has to keep with themselves 
uh, in a liquid form so that they can discharge of their duties timely, right? So they usually what government do is they increase these rate during the expansion phase to control this inflation cycle, right? Because if they are going to keep more reserves with them, uh, with them, then they will left with lesser money to distribute to the people in terms of loan, right? So uh, that is why that is the purpose. They increase these rates of reserve to keep more reserves with themselves and distribute lesser uh, loan to the people, so that lesser money will flow to the market, and this is how they can be able to control the money supply. Then there are open market operations. Open market operation is where the government make it easier for the people for their purchase and sale of uh, you know government bond shares and securities, right? So during the inflation, as we all know, the money supply is already there in the market. People are having more income. Uh, you know uh, there is more money in the market. So government want that they should be investing their money into their savings, right? In, in the buying of uh, you know these uh, shares, bonds, and uh, services right investments can be done okay rather than spending more on the consumption because if they will spend more income on the consumption of goods and services that will further increase the demand right and this increase in demand will further increase the price so the uh, reason behind bringing these operations into the open market uh, where it will make easier for the people to invest their money in these bonds securities and shares so that they are left with lesser income to spend on the consumption of goods and services. Then we have this selective credit control, selective credit as we all know credit facility is provided by the banking and the financial institutions in the economy, but yes for sure when there is a higher supply of money in the market, government make this selective uh, you know uh, policy, credit policy very selective, right? Credit facility is being given to the people, but yes it is being given on a very selective basis so that uh, not everybody can get that loan and uh, have a position of making more investments in the economy. That has been given on a very selective basis depending upon the uh, nature of loan, the requirement of the loan and the identity of the person who is availing that loan, right? So these are some monetary measures which are being taken up by the government so that they would be able to control the money supply, right? And especially during this inflation phase when there is an ex expansion taking place, government is uh, you know planning to reduce the supply of money. Then uh, we have some fiscal measures also, right? Uh, fiscal measures are related to the government expenditure and revenue. So what happens during the fiscal measure is because already the supply of money is more in the market, right? We have talked about autonomous investments and induced investments. So induced investments are usually made by the private firms. Whereas autonomous investments are uh, done by the government, okay, because here their motive is not to earn profit, but they do it for uh, making or bringing the economy into the recovery phase where the private investors are not ready to invest. So as you see that during the expansion phase, we have lot of induced investments, private firms are investing more in the economy because of uh, their higher expectations of return, right? They believe that if they will invest here at that point of time when the demand is higher in the market, they will get good returns, right? So usually what government do is they reduce their expenditure, okay? So it is the only choice they are left with because already the private owners are spending lot of money on the investments of, uh, you know, on the production of goods and services. They are already making lot of investment. So what government do is they reduce their public expenditure at least at one end they would be able to reduce the supply of money. And secondly, they increase the public revenue. Yes, revenue is a source of income, right? And usually we know that government source of income is by the way of charging taxes. So when there is more supply of money in the market, the income of consumers are increasing and because of which they are demanding more of goods and services. So government usually charge higher taxes from the uh, you know consumers as well as from the producers so that uh, the excessive income which they are having right so that their personal disposable income can be reduced right because personal disposable income is the income which they can dispose of after discharging their tax liability so if the government will charge higher taxes from the consumer they will left with the lesser disposable income and this is how they would be able to spend less on the consumption of goods and services so this these are the fiscal measures uh, you can say the uh, taken up by the government for the control of uh, you know supply of money in the market by reducing their public expenditure and by increasing their public revenue, right? So these are our controlling measures of inflation. 
So, if you look at the uh, topic for today's session, what are the topics which we have covered here? We have talked about inflation, what inflation is, what causes this inflation, we have talked about the different reasons and here we have talked particularly about uh, this uh, demand pull inflation and the cost push inflation, these are the two different reasons because of which there will be an inflation in the economy. Then we have seen the relationship or you can say the impact of inflation on the decision making by the consumers, by the producers as well as by the uh, you know government, right. There are a lot of things which uh, what lot of decisions which are needed to be taken up by the producers, consumers and the government because of the inflation in the economy. Then we have also talked about the measurements of inflation that we usually do on the basis of price index and these price indexes are being calculated uh, based at different uh, stages, right, at the different stages of the product. Uh, it can be measured at producers uh, at uh, level where we call it as in producers price index. Then wholesaler can also measure what change has been taken up in the price of wholesale, right, that is called as wholesaler price index and then we have consumer price index. So, usually this consumer price index is being kept as a criteria for the measurement of inflation because this is the price which finally reaches to the consumer. And then we have seen the relationship between inflation and employment. Right. Whenever there is a higher infl inflation taking place in the economy, then definitely the unemployment rate will be lesser. Right. But the government has to choose the feasible point right, to understand the uh, requirement of how much inflation they are ready to accept and how much unemployment rate they are ready to accept. And lastly, we have talked about the control of inflation. Inflation can be controlled uh, at the government level at different in, in different ways. Right, we have talked about monetary policies as well as the fiscal policies, right. Monetary policies are usually being taken up to control the supply of money in the market as because during the inflation the supply of money is already there, right. There is lot of uh, money in the market, right, because of which the demand is increasing, right. So, government take various measures to reduce the supply of money, right. And whereas in fiscal measure we have seen how government will make a change in their expenditure and revenue to again control the supply of money in the market. So, this is all for our today's class, uh, right. And before we cover up this complete syllabus, I would like to have a course review with all of you, right. So, here I have a brief understanding of this course of managerial economics which we have covered and here I want to introduce you uh, what topics which we have discussed in this particular course starting from the very first topic we have talked about introduction to economic and in this lecture the very first lecture talked about the importance of studying economics why we have talked about what economics is what are the basic assumptions we make here what are the different decisions we need to make right we have talked about uh, this uh, managerial economics concept also what is meant by managerial economics and how we integrate the economic theories into the uh, problems of the business so as we would be able to make out the optimum decision. Then we had this chapter 2 which uh, discussed about the basic nature, features and scope of managerial economics. Here in this chapter we have talked about the objectives of the firm because there are different objectives from, for which the firms are working. And we have seen different theories of profit maximization, sales maximization, growth maximization, managerial utility functions, right. So, there are different theories we have discussed under this heading. Then we have also talked about the difference between economic theory and managerial theories because they are different, their orientations are different and their consideration for the requirement is also different. So, we have discussed that. And we have also talked about the roles and responsibilities played by the managerial economist in the organization as because he is a very he is a very important person in the organization and helps the management to make better decisions and forward planning. Then in the third chapter we have talked about fundamental economic concepts right and there we have discussed various uh, you know uh, principles right these fundamental principles help the manager to make out better decisions right. We have understood the concept of opportunity cost and what is meant by incremental cost, how this discounting principle help us to understand the time value of money. We have discussed about time perspective principle which helps the manager to understand that they need to maintain a right balance between the short run and the long run and lastly we have talked about this equi marginal principle 
which helps in the discussion of allocating the resources right where the marginal uh, productivity we are getting from all the activities will remain same because we know there is an scarcity of resources so this optimum utilization of resources becomes very important for all the organization to achieve their objective efficiently as well as uh, effectively right then we have started with demand because for the understanding of managerial economics what to produce demand analysis has to be made right so what is meant by demand what are the various determinants which affect the demand different types of demands were discussed we have talked about demand functions which establish the relationship between the demand and its determinants how movements and shifts in demand curves takes place right thereafter we have talked about this law of demand as well as supply right law of demand talked about uh, how this law of demand established the relationship between the effect of price on the demand keeping other factors to be constant and in this chapter we have also talked about uh, the reasons behind law of demand why this law of demand exists right and what are the things which are not applicable to this law of demand there are different exceptions as well right and we have also seen those exceptions which are there where when the price of the commodity increases their demand does not decreases and this uh, this uh, you know lecture also talked about the supply as because supply is also a very important consideration when we talk about demand we need to know about supply as well right because they are the two sides of a same coin demand is from the side of the consumer whereas supply is on the side from the producers right so thereafter we have talked about this elasticity concept because elasticity helps us in the measurement of change in demand taking place law of demand is a qualitative aspect whereas elasticity of demand is a quantitative aspect so here in this chapter we have talked about the meaning and the importance of measuring elasticities and particularly we have seen how we can calculate price elasticity income elasticity as well as cross elasticity so those were the things which were discussed and their implications in managerial decision makings were also covered thereafter we have talked about demand forecasting because demand need to be forecasted forever uh, yeah it because if you want to uh, uh, make a production according to the demand if you want to overcome the situation of over production and under production right demand forecasting is must right so what is the relative importance of demand forecasting right how do we forecast the demand what are the different methods which are available to us right depending upon the uh, you know requirement of forecasting whether you want to forecast it at individual level or at industry level or at firm level right for what period you are taking into consideration right we are forecasting the demand for the new product in the market or for the existing product in the market we have different methods and those methods were discussed under the category of qualitative and quantitative methods then we have talked about consumer preference theory which talks about the consumers buying behavior how consumers spend their income on the purchase of different goods and services we have understood the concept of utility which can be measured in terms of cardinal as well as ordinal utility we have talked about in different curves analysis here so this is the uh, topic which also discuss about the uh, you know preference theory of the consumer where consumers are clear with their preferences with their choices so it is very important for the producer to know the buying behavior of the consumer so that accordingly they can uh, follow the different strategies and policies thereafter we have talked about cost theory because cost is again a very important consideration in the production process so what are the different types of cost we have up to which point we should produce we have here discussed the relationship between uh, the basic cost like fixed cost variable cost average cost relationship between average cost and marginal cost so all these topics were discussed here in this uh, lecture then we have also talked about economies of scale right economies of scales refers to the advantages which a firm is going to get when they produce their uh, you know output in a larger scale right when they operate at the larger scale how they would be able to get the advantages of economies of scale and would be able to reduce their cost of production so here we have seen different economies in terms of managerial in terms of technical in terms of labor and we have also talked about the diseconomies of scale when the firm uh, you know increases their size of production uh, and when it becomes wild unwildly spreadable right then there also arises the diseconomies of scale so th that is what has been covered in this lecture looking further we have talked about production theory right production theory helps us to understand 
how production can be made and uh, with one variable as well as two variables right we have law of variable production we have law of return to scale was covered here then we have also talked about market structure yes different market structure understanding is very important and here we have covered about perfect competition monopolistic competition monopoly market and oligopoly market so these different markets were discussed their features were discussed as well as how the price and output determinations were been made right in short run as well as in the long run and the managerial implications of these market structures were also covered then we have talked about the pricing strategies as because price plays a very important role so before um, uh, an employer determines the price of their product they need to take into account various considerations so different methods were being discussed based on different criteria so that a right pricing policies can be used so as it can be uh, satisfied it can satisfy the customer so that they feel that right price they are getting for the value uh, for the product which they are purchasing producers are also happy with the profit they are getting and stakeholders are also happy with the returns they are getting then we have talked about this macroeconomic part of this uh, you know course where uh, to understand or to take the right decision at micro level this macroeconomic analysis is very important and here we have understood about national income circular flow of economic activities and income how do they interact with each other uh, we have seen the phases of business cycle why what happened these case, uh, these co what causes these phases in the economy of expansion contraction so here we have also talked about various theories given by different people or you can say economist and lastly we have talked about inflation right so this last lecture covered about inflation what it is how do we measure it what are the reasons behind inflation and what uh, precautionary measures can be taken up what control uh, controlling measures are being taken up by the government to control the effect of inflation so this is all about this course managerial economics and these are some reference books uh, given for the understanding and the better clarity of this course thank you all of you